Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I find you well. It is a privilege to gather once again on the series Family Togetherness. And for this evening, we want to look at the title Keeping Church and Family Together and its Mission on the Local Community. Without much ado, let us get into the word of the Lord and we want to receive our blessings from the book of Acts. The chapter is 1 and we want to look at verse number 8. It reads as follows. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Let us pray, my friends. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the great commission that you have given us to go out into the world and to make disciples for the kingdom of heaven, to teach them that which you have commanded us. How we pray, dear Father, that even as we go, may we not go in our might, but may you lead the way. Go ahead of us and even lead us. This is our prayer of faith, knowing that as we go out as families, some of our destinations are to our families, to our nearby communities, and even beyond. Be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. My dear friends, allow me to raise you and guess right. Five points. And uh, these five points are basically going to be based on the mission what has God sent his children out to do? He has said, you shall wait in Jerusalem until you receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When you have received the Holy Spirit, thereafter you're going to go into Jerusalem, into Judea, into Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. What is Christ saying to us today? He's saying, follow the sequence of mission. What is the sequence of mission to our families? It is as follows. Point number one, be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Do not go out in your own might. The Bible says, after you have received the power, you shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost. When we go out in our own might, chances are we are going to fail dismally. We are going to be very disappointed because we will believe it is a dead end. Spreading the good news is a frustrating enterprise. Why? Because we do so in our own power. And most likely we do so even to seek credit for ourselves. Christ says you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Is it Zechariah who says it is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit says the Lord, it is as we go in the spirit of the Lord and with the right spirit that souls shall be won to the kingdom, that many shall come to the faith and regardless of whether these that we go unto are by our doorsteps or they are just in the neighborhood or they are beyond, we need to go in the right spirit. Point number two, without much ado, notice what Christ says. He says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you and you shall be witnesses. Witnesses. What is a witness? Somebody who testifies of that which they have seen or that which they have experienced or that which they have observed. When you talk about things that you have not experienced, that is what is known as hearsay. When you have received the power, you are going to have a first-hand experience of God. And as families, God is saying you are going to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And at that point, you are going to become first-hand and primary witnesses. You are not just witnesses. May I underscore this? Christ makes it clear. Witnesses unto me with that qualifier. Many of us, we end up witnessing about ourselves and not about Christ. We steal the narrative and it ceases to be about God and it becomes about our accomplishments. It ceases to, about, to be about the work of God, but it becomes about what we can achieve and what we can realize. 
Christ is saying, listen here, you are my witness. You do not tell your own story. Tell the story of Christ. As the songwriter said, more about Jesus. More about Jesus. Tell me the story of Christ and his righteousness. The world is seeking a story of Christ. The world is waiting for a testimony of Christ and not a testimony of what we can do in our own mind. It is seeking the story of Jesus Christ. And then Christ goes on. Message to families. As you go to your local communities, notice what he says. He says, um, you are going to begin unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. Now let's do a bit of um, grammar here. I know most of you are very conversant with the language and maybe more conversant than I am. The Bible says, and both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. So when, when, when the Bible starts with the both, it simply means as you take off, you are going to approach this particular mission simultaneously. You're not going to go to Jerusalem exclusively. You are not going to go to Judea exclusively but you're going to go to both Jerusalem and Judea. Where was Jerusalem located? Let's go to a bit of geography. Jerusalem was located in Judea. Judea was part of the greater, let me say, province or subdivision of the nation of Israel. So the family of uh, Judah and the family of Benjamin, uh, if I'm not mistaken, remained behind, and these comprised the 10 tribes. I mean, I mean, the two tribes that were referred to as Judah, the tribe of Judah or the nation of Judah. The other 10 tribes, they became Samaria. These were commonly referred to as Israel. So in the Bible, when you find Judah and uh, Israel, that is the distinction. But Jerusalem was the capital city, as it were, of Judah. So when Christ is talking to his disciples, he is talking to them while they are in Jerusalem. The instructive, the, the instruction is as follows. You shall remain in Jerusalem until you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, when we get to Matthew, I mean to Acts chapter 1, the verses 8, and he says, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea. Remember when you get to Acts chapter 2, when we get the Pentecost experience, the devout Jews who come in, they wonder, are not these Galileans that we hear speaking in our native tongues? These are people who had come from Phrygia. These are people who had come from Mesopotamia. These are people who had come from Asia. They had come from everywhere for the Pentecost. Now we know for a fact, these men are from Galilee. But when Christ says, start in Jerusalem, many a time we have said, the imperative is start within your family and then go out into Samaria. The imperative is start where you are, in Jerusalem, where you are. Where are you right now? Start there. Are you in a bus? Start your ministry there. Are you in a plane? Start sharing the mission and the good news right in the plane. Are you on a train? Start sharing the mission where you are. Are you in the workspace? Do so. And of course, not to exclude the family. Where are you right now? You are in your family. You are a member of the family and start right there. Share the good news and become a witness of God where you are. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to tell you that this mission, this gospel is to be preached so that the end should come. And where do we start? In Jerusalem, not in Galilee, where we are. And when is time to start? Today. When is the time to start? Now. When is the time to start? Where you are. Do it now. Just do it. And the Bible goes on. Says, this you shall do in Jerusalem. This you shall do in Judea. And when you are done with Jerusalem and Judea, what is Jerusalem? What is Judea? Jerusalem and Judea are your comfort zones. They are your comfort areas. These are places that are within your reach. When you are done with these, notice what the Bible says. The Bible does not say then Samaria. 
I, I, want, I want you to take note of this. The Bible says, you shall do this both in Jerusalem and in old Judea. Notice, and in old Judea and in Samaria. I, I, I love the way the Bible now makes this distinction. You shall be my witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in old Judea. So both in Jerusalem and the conjunction there simply means you are going to go through this exercise at the same time, conjunctively adding on top of Jerusalem, all of Judea. What is the mission supposed to be in your comfort spaces? Do not leave any stone unturned and any turn unstoned. You are going to make sure you cover all your comfort spaces. Let all those who know you know what you stand for. Let all those who are within your reach hear you firsthand. Because the Bible says, all Judea, not some of Judea, all Judea, all of it, cover it. Let them know if they are members of your family, all Judea. If there are people in your village, in your town, all Judea. In your province, all Judea. Now the Bible goes on, and in Samaria. The Bible does not say then Samaria, so it doesn't add Samaria. It doesn't give it in a sequence to say, start in Jerusalem, go to Judea, then to Samaria. But the Bible says, and Samaria, conjunctively added on top. So if you have to clear your mission, your mission also covers Samaria. Later on, we're going to go into who are these Samaritans. You're going to love this. Just stick around. The Bible then says, and unto the utmost part of the earth. And what was the utmost part of the earth as Christ was talking to the Jews? As Christ was talking to the Jews. I, 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 I love this. Come with me to um, point number four. The Samaritans, I've already referred to them as the ten tribes of Israel. Who are these other ten tribes? You will notice that the Levites were not counted. The other two tribes that come in are the tribes of Joseph. Of Joseph. It is Ephraim and Manasseh. His two children the Ephraimites and the tribe of Manasseh. These come in and replace the Levites. The Levites were not to be counted because they were a tribe that belonged to God. So the 10 other tribes, this is where now the Ephraimites are leading. The tribe of Dan is in there. The tribe of Issachar is in there. The tribe of Zebulun is in there. You mentioned them all. They, mentioned, they, 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 they comprise the 10 tribes. Now what became of these tribes? These tribes were taken into captivity by the Assyrians, while those of Judah were taken into captivity by the Babylonians. Now you're going to find that when uh, Daniel and um, uh, is it Jeremiah speak to the children of Israel coming back after 70 years, they are referring to the two tribes of Judah. Those are the ones who returned from captivity because they were kept apart. So when you read the book of Esther, that is a book that relates to the tribe of Judah. Let me say to the nation of Judah. Yeah, so that it becomes clearer. To the nation of Judah. But when you talk about the nation of Samaria, what happened is that when these tribes were taken into Assyria, what the Assyrians did, the Assyrians did not have people live in one space, but they scattered them all over and there were serious intermarriages such that they, they became diluted. They were no longer the pure breed of the Hebrews. And what the Assyrians did was then they also displaced them and they brought in other people who were supposed to live where the Samaritans used to live. So as a result, the Samaritans became half Jews. So when the Bible now says, go to Samaria, the Bible is saying, go to your half brothers. Go to those people who are not purely aligned in terms of your faith and background as you, as you do, but you want to go out to them. They are still entitled to receive the good word from you. They are Samaritans. As we now get to the book of uh, Genesis chapter 10, I promise you, you're going to find that after all, when Christ says you are going to the uttermost part of the earth, you're going to find something interesting here, something very interesting. As you find the children of Noah, the Bible says these were the children of Noah and these were their descendants. Who were the children of Noah? Number one, in no particular order, Ham. Number two, Shem. 
I'm going to spend much time on these two. And then the last one was Japheth. Genesis chapter 10 goes on to say, Out of him there was born the Africans. These are Mizraim, the Egyptians, and Sheba. I believe these were the Ethiopians. And out of him as well was born the Babylonians, the ones who took the Jews into captivity. They were descendants of Noah. The Babylonians are descendants of Noah. And who are these Babylonians? The Assyrians and the Ninevites, the ones to whom we find um, Jonah being sent to go and uh, prophesy to them of a destruction that is to come. Those were descendants of Noah. And as if that is not enough, the Canaanites. Who are the Canaanites? We're talking about the Amorites. You'd remember when uh, we looked at the issue of, um, is, is it the issue of um, Mordecai and Agag, the one who, the Amorite who wanted to, 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 to slaughter them? Who was this? This was a descendant of Noah. The Canaanites comprised of seven nations. And some of these nations were the, the, the Amorites, you had the Hittites, you had the Hivites, you had the Jebusites, the ones who used to live in Jerusalem and were overcome by David. These people were descendants of Noah. As the Bible says, go to the utmost, it is referring to the descendants of Noah. They too have been saved by God out of the flood. They too deserve to hear from the Lord. And out of him came the Philistines. Even though the Philistines, I mean the Philistines of Goliath, those were cousins of the Israelites. They were the children of God. They are a big family. As we minister to our families, our families are not just the next of kin. That's the point I seek to make. Our families are a greater bulk and they are more complicated. Go to the second son of Noah. His name was Shem. And Shem is the one from whom comes the Hebrews. So as you come to Shem, notice that Shem is just their ancestor. While Ham becomes the ancestor of the Africans. That's us. Now all these as they come together in the African context the Jewish family structure is like the African context where everyone is related, everyone is connected. You, when you get to the Hebrews, I want you to notice this. You're going to find that we come all the way to Abraham. And let's start at Abraham. What we find in Abraham. Abraham had a nephew. His nephew was Lot. Lot then moved to Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was a nation that belonged to the cities of Ham. So as he lived in Sodom and Gomorrah, those were the children of Ham. Where Sodom was, while he was in Sodom and Gomorrah, guess what? The Lord decided to extinguish the place with fire. Having done so, they are then meant to run to the mountains. As they escape Sodom, guess what happens? His children decide to be intimate with their father. Out of Lot is born the Moabites and the Ammonites. These are the cousins of the Israelites. They are Hebrews, as it were, because they are from the house of Abraham who had adopted uh, Lot as his own son. As if that is not enough, come forward, then you're going to find that when then Abraham goes into Hagar, Ishmael is born, and out of Ishmael comes the Ishmaelites. So as the Ishmaelites are born, they become cousins of the Israelites. As if that is not enough, Isaac is born. Isaac gives birth to two sons, Jacob and Esau. And out of Esau, the elder, the Edomites are born. These are Jews as well. And out of Israel, the Israelites are born. And out of the Israelites, you now get the Samaritans and the Jews. When the Bible says, go into the uttermost, it is a message to families. Go to your brothers. Go to your cousins. Go to your sisters. Go to your nephews. Go to whosoever they deserve to hear from the word of the Lord. And lastly, there is the less known child of Noah. His name was Japheth. And Japheth is the father of the Europeans and the Asians, the Greeks and them all. 
if you go through the whole nations of Israel, you will find that the earth begins or reboots at Noah. So let's go back to Acts chapter 1, the verse is 8, as we come to an end. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto God Almighty, both in Jerusalem, where you are, and in all Judea, to your family and friends, and in Samaria, to your half-brothers, and to the uttermost part of the earth, to your distant relatives that you do not know so well. Some of them you have been fighting with for a lifetime. Some of them have set you under bondage, like the Egyptians, the Assyrians, and the Babylonians. The Ninevites, all those need to hear of the love of God from you. They are within your mission. Your mission is not as far as your nose can reach, but it is beyond your eyes reach. Go out in the power of the God who has sent you. For he has promised, Lo, as you go into your families to minister as a witness for me, I am with you always. Our heads are bowed and we pray. Kind of gracious Father in the heavens above, Dear Lord, the message has been clear. Go ye therefore, and we want to go, not in our strength, not in our might, but we seek to go with you. Dear Lord, may you lead the way. Some of the missions where we are to go, we have not had a beautiful past. Things are not in place. We are enemies, and yet the message is still clear to the utmost part of the earth. That is where you shall go. The church of the New Testament went out, and some of them died even in Africa, in Ethiopia. Some were pulled apart by chariots. Some were slain, and some were even nailed to the cross upside down, but they still went. And dear Father, may you give us the spirit of old. Revive in us our first love, so that we can go out and share the good news. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen.